in this clinical trial, we will prepare two lists of volunteers. One is will include those whom we call the deployable, those who are likely to go to regions affected by the Ebola virus outbreak. And the second one is the others. In each list, we will start the screening and information visit by order of registration, so the sooner the faster. Um, and we will then, as soon as a volunteer has fulfilled all the criteria and confirmed its part his participation, we will enroll him or her and, and give him a ticket. And when all the tickets will have been distributed, we will have completed enrollment. So what we will do if we get many requests from volunteers is that every week we will give the priority to those who are deployable. Every week we have 15 tickets. If there are 15 potentially deployable volunteers, they will get all the tickets and the others will have to wait. If there are only five a given week, then we will have uh, uh, spaces for 10 uh, non-deployable tickets. And so th this is how we will both ensure that enrollment is as fast as possible, but give priority to those who may be exposed. So only the volunteers who are not likely to go in regions affected by the Ebola virus uh, outbreak uh, will have a chance of receiving the placebo. And this group of volunteers will be randomly selected to receive either one lower dose or a higher dose or the placebo. So one chance out of three of getting a placebo. This is what we need as a control baseline uh, figure. The vaccine will be administered in the muscle of the upper arm as any vaccine and we expect that the injection will be very little painful. Main risk for the volunteers is to suffer from an inflammatory reaction following the immunization. Uh, we know that and we expect it to essentially include fever, myalgia, maybe headache, fatigue, and we expect this to start on the day of the immunization, maybe during the night or on the following day, and we expect it not to last more than a couple of days. We know that not everyone will suffer from that, but I prefer telling them this is the risk. Now, of course, when you give a, a vaccine or a drug for the first time in humans, there are always unknown risks that could occur. And this is why a large number of precautions have been implemented to reduce this risk to a minimum. So when you do a study first in human, you take a huge number of precautions to reduce the risk to as low as possible. First, we will only immunize healthy adult volunteers. Second, following immunization, we will ask the volunteers to stay and remain for at least an hour and a half in the uh, clinical trial unit where a group of expert uh, uh, physicians and nurses are there and will take care of anything that could possibly happen. Then we will ask them to come on the next day to tell us that everything is fine and to have a blood test to show that everything is fine and again and in the following days. So all this is done to reduce the risk to a minimum. So the objective of this study are to measure safety and to select the dose of the vaccine which is required to induce antibodies. So to measure safety, we will ask volunteers to come on the day after immunization, on day three and on day seven, and to tell us all about their symptoms and whatever happened, and we will uh, make a blood check to see that everything is fine. Subsequently, we need to measure uh, the immune response, and we will ask volunteers to come two weeks, one month, three months, and six months after immunization for a blood test to measure how they uh, responded to the vaccine. So altogether nine visits uh, for the volunteers. So if the vaccine is not effective at all, we will know very soon because we know that to be effective, the vaccine has to trigger antibody responses. So that will be fast. If the vaccine does induce antibody responses in humans, as it does in monkeys, which we really hope for, uh, then it will be a very important step forward. But the demonstration that these antibodies are protective will require these vaccines to be used at a large scale in affected areas and comparing the risk of infections among those vaccinated or not prior to exposure. And this is one of the following steps which is currently being prepared already by WHO and, and partners. 
Despite the fact that a number of our volunteers will go to affected areas, this will not allow us any conclusion uh, regarding the protective efficacy of the vaccine. In fact, we keep telling our volunteers that we have no idea of whether the vaccine will be protective at a high level or, or not at all. And so we ask them to take any precautionary measure that they have to in order not to get infected. So this implies a very low risk of infection. And so the number of volunteers that will go abroad uh, following uh, an, an immunization here in Geneva will be too small. I do expect that none of them will be uh, infected whether or not they get the vaccine because of the precautions that we ask them to take.